Um, so, let's talk about some language differences. Spanish speakers, which I think we'll have a lot of, would have some difficulty on these sounds. So I'm going to write them on the board here. And probably the CH and the V, the TH. And there's two types of THs, I'll tell you. Uh, one is what we call the voiceless, which is just here, like in think, thirsty, Thursday. And the other one is what we call is the voice, the voice. It's your tongue is between your teeth, and then you just have a little vibration, and that would be uh, there, those, and the. So, and also the vowels. Vowels. Okay, that would be the Spanish speakers would have some difficulty with that. Um, we do have a lot of Asian speakers, and the Asians would have some difficulty the Chinese, Korean, Vietnamese, Japanese. I'm not sure about Thai or any of those other ones, but um, they again would have some difficulty on the TH, voiceless, and the voiced. And in addition, the R, what I'm call calling the R and the L clusters. They get those mixed up a lot. And most all non-English speakers will have difficulty on the R and the, the TH, the voice and the voice less. And they're also going to have difficulty on the vowels. And again, the rate, the rhythm, the intonation, or what we call prosody. And that's something that relies on a lot of listening, prosody. So how do we work on the sounds? Requires a lot of listening, I believe. And um, I start out with sound discrimination. Listening for the sound and sound discrimination. And I'd like to do the same and different. Say, for example, I'll just demonstrate a little lesson. For example, Asian speakers might have some difficulty with the L and the R. Oh, I like this whiteboard. It's just like, cool, this is hot. All right, L and the R. They would have some difficulty with that. So I would say, all right, listen very carefully. I'm going to say some words. Tell me whether they are same or different. So I would say, um, say for example, red, red. Is that the same or different? You know, thumbs up. If I would say um, another thing, I'd say red, lead, then they're different. All right, so I contrast the sounds by having them listen to same and different. All right, let's just do a little demo here. I'll say some words, and you tell me whether they're same or different. I'll do L and R, all right? So, Rice, lice. Good. Like a fast learner's here. Road, load. Race, lace. Lace, lace. Okay. Now, I did that. Maybe you were watching my mouth. Maybe you were listening. But then to eliminate the visual piece, which you go again to Barbara wants to look at your face and I want to like, okay, concentrate on listening. So I'll do the same words and then I'll just block it off and see if they do that. And then if you do that enough, they'll notice that you do something different with your tongue. And I think it's not important that you teach them, you know, how to put your mouth and everything. It's like, okay, just go by what you listen, how you hear it. Let's do L and R cluster. Um, all right, so I'll do a cluster and I'll do different words and you tell me whether they're same or different, up or down. And you see how it, it's not a huge amount of preparation, just kind of like at the top of your head. All right, so let's do this one. Breed, bleed. 
clown crown 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 okay glass grass last one bloom bloom okay I like how Mark he's closing his eyes now maybe you're sleeping but you know it's kind of like <laughs> closing your eyes and it really helps him to concentrate on the sound I think that's great good good you are so good <laughs> um, so that would be like kind of a, a sample for what you might do with Asian speakers because they have an LR difficulty Spanish speakers they would have an, a difficulty with SH CH okay so I'll say some words and you tell me whether same or different same thing um, let's see share share shin chin ship chip okay that's the one my friend always says oh, I always get mixed up do I bring chips I go, yes bring chips <laughs> all right they also would have some difficulty Spanish speakers have difficulty with V and B and um, from what I've been told it's it's very you know the Spanish is very soft and English is so hard and harsh so you know they might say it but it's really subtle but I said in order to hear it we have to make like hard contact mm -hmm. all right so let's try a few um, again up or down van ban bat bat vote vote vase vase okay you have really good ears really good ears now it's more difficult now Spanish speakers have difficulty with the vowel sound vowels are so much harder to teach and I'm gonna write this down like this e and e you know like pin Pen, but this is more like all right so are same or different let me know by um, up or down so this is e and this is i right so let's run through a few uh, seat seat good it's same feel fill Lean, Lin. Good. Neil, Mill. Okay, last one. Peel, Peel. Okay, good. Um, so contrasts. Because you hear the contrast, also there's a meaning difference as well. So if they're not getting it, you use it in a context some of those examples Tuesdays and Thursdays again um, then practice that word by listening by sound discrimination and then practice it three times three times quickly and then in a short sentence say for example when I was working as a speech therapist and the parents would say to me well Johnny can't say the word run very well can you help him with that and I said okay so he'd say, I'll show him a picture, and he says, run. The girl can, then he would finish the sentence. But then in the next two seconds down the road, he'll say something else. He'll say one instead. And said, well, what we need to do is build on something, make it rapid. So you can say, say the one word, say it three times. Run, 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 then make a little sentence. Run, 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 I can run. Run, 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 I see you run. And it's just a little drill, but it's, it helps to build up the rate and the motor memory in your mouth. If some of you have ever taken um, dance 
or golf or any of those things and you do the lessons and I see some of you like nodding your head and I can't golf I'm like totally a doofus but you know you hold it a certain way you stand a certain way and then you swing the ball you look down you do all these things and you can do that maybe in isolation maybe just for one time maybe two times but when you play a game then you know the ante is up you need to do it quickly you need to do it under pressure you need to do it so it's fluid it's kind of like speech it's a motor memory you do it once you do it twice you do it three times then put it in a sentence and that helps to build up that rate um, so let the learner provide the list practice with imitation listening <laughs> and um, Use a small mirror, that would help. Use a tape recorder, that could help. Um, and listening seems to be the most important thing. The research says that there's a strong relationship between auditory perception and reading levels. Auditory perception, auditory discrimination was ranked the number one foremost factor in learning to read as opposed to auditory discrim, visual discrim, range of information, and also mental age. So the research is pointing to, to listening, but also it helps to do the visual as well because we can't rely on just one modality. The more you have, the better. So think about the communication. This is not the most important thing, but if it's for your student, your client, your learner, and they want to learn some words, definitely um, think about how that could impact their everyday life. So if they're motivated, they want to do it, they have some words, um, you have the, you have the tools.